to make the brioche dough, we're going to start by adding the pumpkin to the dissolved yeast and water mixture in the, in the mixer bowl. Then grab the eggs, the brown sugar, pumpkin pie spice, and the flour. The salt will be added last. Some bakers like to add the salt to the flour and mix it all together, but I like to have control. I like to seed the salt on top. If salt is added too soon, it can delay fermentation. It's, import, it's an important ingredient in yeasted doughs, but it's also good to add it at the right time for success. Mix the dough for about three minutes until it begun, begins to come together in a cohesive mass and develop some gluten. Then we're going to add our softened butter. The reason we wait and develop a little bit of gluten before adding the butter is because adding the fat too early inhibits gluten formation and this can um, affect volume in our finished product. So just let it mix. Once it's come together, stop the mixer, and it is important to stop the mixer and scrape down periodically. And we're going to change from the dough hook to the paddle just to get the butter mixed into the dough. This is a technique that's kind of unique to brioche because we have quite a bit of fat that has to go into even the most leanest of brioche doughs. Remove the dough from the hook, that's always so important. If it's just clinging to the cook, it's not developing. It's actually the dough mixing against the bowl that helps it develop. Change, add the butter. It helps to have the butter at room temperature and the butter is cut into pieces. That way it mixes evenly and you can, uh, once it's mixed evenly, you can remove the paddle and then change to the dough hook and get into the final mix. And that means you're in the home stretch with mixing this dough. It will look soft and sticky. That's typical for brioche, so don't worry. If you see any butter up the side of the bowl, then scrape it down and also make sure to scrape down the paddle. A good tool to use to scrape down the paddle, well, there's a couple. You can use the bowl scraper like I'm doing in the video. You can also use a small offset spatula. That's, I have that on high authority. That's, that's Martha Stewart's technique for scraping the paddle. But whatever works for you. We're going to mix once that butter is fully mixed in. And I mean, it has disappeared. Temperature is critical. If your butter's too cold, it's going to chip away into the batter and then it will not dissolve, it won't melt properly in the final bake. It might even bake up splotchy and we wouldn't want that. Always, always scraping down. Get yourself two of these bowl scrapers, so you have one clean, one dirty, and you're always good to go. Now, we're going to mix for five minutes. The video is speeded up so that it doesn't take forever. After the five minute mix, the dough will be beautiful and smooth. Scrape onto a piece of plastic, wrap and wrap loosely. Bulk ferment for one hour at room temperature, then chill for at least two hours before shaping. To make the cream cheese, 
filling, we're going to combine the cream cheese and butter in the mixer and we're going to mix till they're smooth. It's really helpful for the cream cheese and butter to be at room temperature. Let them sit out a while. You can also, if you forget, cut the cream cheese and butter into chunks and then let it sit out for about an hour. That will make a real difference. Cover both so they don't form a skin. Once the cream cheese and butter are smooth, we're going to add the sugar and mix until combined. And by the way, this clip has been speeded up so that it doesn't take forever. Once the um, sugar, cream cheese, and butter are combined, we're going to go ahead and add our eggs. Make sure to stop the mixer and scrape down before adding the eggs. We're going to also add the vanilla extract at the same time. You can use vanilla bean paste if you like. Both work equally well and they are a one-to-one -one ratio. Whatever it says for vanilla extract, you would use the same for vanilla bean paste. Again, oh, here's our, uh, this is how Martha did it. You can do that too. Look how clean that is. Continue to mix until smooth. Getting that egg in there can be a little bit tricky, or egg yolk. I apologize, it is actually an egg yolk. And a very good thing to do is to make this ahead of time and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight to thicken up. You can even go ahead and put it in your piping bag, fitted with an 804 tip, until, and, and store it that way until you're ready to use. The last thing, add in that little bit of flour and mix until combined. Don't forget to scrape down, so important. You can add the flour with a spatula if you like. In fact, if, this, uh, if everything is at the right temperature, you can mix this filling by hand. No problem at all. Great, that's it. Just a quick cleanup. Put it in a container and stick it in the fridge or your piping bag until it's ready to use. This is the easiest crumb topping ever. First thing to do in a medium-sized bowl, make sure it's big enough, combine your dry ingredients. Make sure you get everything then take a spatula and stir until everything is well combined. The melted butter should be cool, but still pourable. And we're going to start by stirring. Start to get those ingredients combined. And then the best thing to do is to get in there with your hands and start mixing once it's at about this stage. That's the most efficient. Mix it together until all the dry ingredients are completely um, moistened by the melted butter. And then break it up with your fingers so the chunks are sort of medium small. We don't want them too large. This keeps in the refrigerator for several weeks. Take your cold dough and, and scale it to 71 gram balls. Then round it the best you can. It will be on the sticky side. You can see I've got a little flour down and I'm using my bowl scraper to loosen any uh, bits that are stuck to the board. Make sure they're spaced out and then give the whole kolachki a generous coat of egg wash. Take a glass and use the bottom of the glass to form your platform. We want to have a relatively thin rim and a nice base to support our cream cheese filling. You have to do a little finessing with your fingers to form that rim and flatten that platform out. It just takes a moment. Then we're ready to pipe. Piping in the filling is the most efficient way to get it into the kolachkis. And for this size batch, you will have just enough filling. So that's good, no waste. 
The next thing I do, because I don't really want those little um, little tips to bake out, bake, bake, I don't want them visible after the bake. That's what I'm trying to say. So just use the offset spatula to smooth. Then we're going to grab our delicious crumb topping and we're going to be generous around the edges. Try to get the edges as best you can and not cover the top unless you want to cover the top with the crumb topping. It's totally up to you. The oven is preheated to 375 degrees and once they're topped they're going right in. No more proofing is necessary for these kolachkis. Great, we are ready to bake. And they're done, golden brown, delicious.